Well, new motor's in. I wrote the date on it, and I got it plugged in. So let's just see if it spins first. Well, got it in. Let's see if they work. Okay. Okay. And now they're not working when it's off. Now they don't work at all. This is what I'm talking about with that leaf spring. It's supposed to kind of hold the weight of the vehicle when you jack it up. Well, there we are. First one's out. And this was the better of the two. All right, got this shack or uh, shock bolted up, as you can see. So we got everything bolted up here. Took it for a test drive. Notice the steering wheel was out of alignment. Um, ignore that until I got all that uh, rust proofed and everything so cool and then I was looking at it and I found it see the gap here now see this driver's side gap right here see how that's nice and even not even um, this wheel is back like an inch it's supposed to be <coughs> excuse me uh, 119 inch wheelbase center to center this is like 120 and I think this is like 118 and a half or something it might be 119 I, this side looked fine this side seems fine but it's the axles like that's why it was that the steering was out of alignment because it was dog tracking so something happened here but the funny thing is not funny it's not funny at all actually um, I can't there's nowhere to adjust like those bolts just go in where they are and that's it this just goes in where it is and that's it uh the front shackle mount goes in where it's at that's it there's no adjustment in this axle so how is it out of alignment like that the only thing i can think of right away is that the aftermarket leaf spring the little uh lineup guy right there is in the wrong spot on that side but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bunch of measurements I did the same thing on this in fact they're they're the same springs if, if you look right here I can get you in here a little bit they're the same husky springs I put on this fan too and this one did perfect the same thing Yep, I did the same exact job on this van four years ago. So we're going to be taking a bunch of measurements between these two. We're going to try to figure out if we can see if we can find what's wrong. Well, we will, one way or another. I just hope I don't have to buy new springs again. Yeah, see this side, mind the rust, but this side's nice. So I don't, I don't quite know what happened. Really. Oh boy. But now you can see why I got this fan. See that? See that nice, nice dog leg? See this not so nice one? I mean, the scratches are hit and run, but see that down there? Yeah. Yeah, that's, hmm. Anyway, we'll be doing a lot of tape measuring today. I can almost see the wheel sitting like this. I can, I can, I can physically see it right here. See that? I don't know if you can tell on, off or on camera, but I can see it off camera. I can see the wheel sitting like that. Hmm. Anyway, the weather, it's gonna be like 60 something degrees today. It's gonna be 60s all week. I figured I'd get the vans pulled out of the shed so I got 
string bean, and I got gray van up there. And the plan is to mess with this and do some measuring, figure out what's wrong. And then I'm gonna get green bean off the trailer, probably up here, pull the oil pan out, see how bad it is. And then when I realize it's really bad, put the oil pan back up, dump some oil in it, and park it in the shed. And then this one, I'll sit in the front of the shed and I'll drive these two until I figure out what's going on. Well, three, there's the 05 back there. Next on the list here is one that you haven't seen yet as of right now either. That would be Eggplant, our 97 Grand Caravan that currently has an axle that's cockeyed. Uh, I would say if you're seeing this right now, let's just say you've seen this already. So. But I got a feeling you won't see this. Now we got 168,153,000. It hasn't been started in a week, and look at that 3-3. Three, three. Mm, sit in five years like nothing. Um, I think the wiper spray. No, the wipers. I got the fuse off, so that, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> because they're always on. And our transmission works still that we uh, installed. Very good. transmission all right boom now we'll just pull the uh, 05 around and we're gonna back the 05 in right here do the same thing we're gonna roll it backwards just like we had to do with the 93 except it'll work this time <laughs> This one seems to roll back easier than the 93 does anyway, for whatever reason. I don't know if there's a little bit more gear left in the transmission for reverse and it just kind of pulls it back better or, or what. And bam. And we're also kind of parked blocked from the wind here, having them against the shed. I was going to pull that battery out because I didn't think it would start to be fair, but it did, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to squeeze my way out of here. Well, guys, it's May 8th. Kind of got dissuaded from working on this after uh, I put the new leafs on and uh, the axle was, you know, like this. Or actually, it's, yeah, it's like that right now. But uh, a couple weeks ago, I did go to the U-Pull yard because I suspected that one... Well, I knew. The only thing that's different is the Leafs. One of them's got to be the wrong length for some reason because they're two husky Leafs. And part number is up there on that sticker, and they are the same part number and everything. But a couple weeks ago, I went and I picked these guys up, and I got these off of that 72,000-mile Grand Caravan that was... You know, they had their blocks at the yard that were on the gas tank and the muffler, so they allowed me to get these leaves out. But I got I got these a couple weeks ago. And right now I just I just took the drill and a you know a brush, scale brush, and I got all the you know the scaly rust off and I'm about to rust convert it. And then I will paint them black, you know, because there are new leaf springs, right? Obviously. The bushings in these are good, so we don't have to worry about pressing your bushings in or screwing that up or screwing up the threads on these bolts like I did, which ended up causing us to... I re-threaded them a little small, but the thread... I re-threaded them, 
to a smaller size but the threads were too thin so when you bottom the the nut out it would want to spin on those threads so I double nutted them and that that got away you know we got away with that but last night I was out here I finally jacked it up in the air you know put jack stands under it and I started doing measurements and stuff so from the axle back this way on both of the leaves they're the same length on this one right here on the left side it's a quarter inch longer for the front half of the leaf which pushes the whole axle back this way which causes that smaller gap larger gap here on this side versus the other side being about right except the wheels at an angle so this leaf spring something it manufactured wrong I, I don't know what else to tell you so um, I'm past my 45 day rock auto return period and I really don't feel like pursuing Husky for a new leaf spring so I'm just going to throw those OEM ones that are 72,000 miles. Seem fine. Don't seem like there's any issues. If one is slightly collapsed uh, or weaker or whatever, I'll probably deal with it because at least the van will be in alignment. But I, I think we'll I think we'll be fine with those. I don't think those will cause us any problems. So anyway, I'm going to clean them up, paint them, rust convert them, paint them. And at some point here, once that is all done, probably... I don't know, in a week or so, or when, whenever I get to it after they're ready to go, we will go ahead and take these back out, which should come out a lot easier because the bolts have all just been out, so we shouldn't have any problems. And this time I will take these this whole shackle out because that whole shackle is going to go in, unlike last time where I pressed it out because it needed new bushings anyway. So I was like, I'll just leave the shackle up there, and that was a mistake. Always take this shackle down and mess with it out of the vehicle is what I what I learned here. But, yeah, and we won't have to worry about it again, hopefully. And we'll have our nice new painted leaf springs and a van that's in alignment and drivable. I mean, it's drivable now, but I, I'm not going to drive it the way it is. So, cool beans. Anyway, I'm not, I didn't show you the drilling. I'm not going to show you the painting. I'll show you the finished product, though, when it's done here. <laughs> this new to me Makita impact or new to my dad I guess uh, it was junk essentially the uh, ball bearing is gone in it so you know junk so there it is that thing is a powerful beast to replace the other one I just need to get a new uh, head for it I guess right but anyway we use that today because I wasn't screwing around it took me what 10 minutes to get both of those springs back out I mean it helps that we've broken those bolts loose before already recently but they're out here, and here's our new ones to go in. Uh, I'm going to do some more measuring here now that I've got them out and just definitively say what the hell was wrong with them. You know, I, I don't know, man, but these are going in it. All right, so I'll show you some rough measurements here. So we're looking at these middle pegs here. See, this one's kind of funny looking, too. It was pounded weird. I, I don't know what happened there, but uh, that one, see how nice that one's pressed in? So something was different when we manufactured this one, which is our problem child here. So if we go over here and I'm set this tape measure so it holds, and what I'm doing is I got the springs right down here and I'm buttoning up the measure, tape measure against the edge of the inside of the spring there. And we 
center that. Fine, can do that. And we kind of bend it and curve it with it. When we hit the center of that notch, let's say we're about 28 and a half just for, you know, we're, we're within an eighth of an inch, put it that way. See that 28 and a half? Not even, what, 28 and a quarter, I mean. 28 and a quarter. So if we go and do the same thing here, and it should be the same, right? We're definitely 28 and a half favored this way towards the rear of the vehicle. So the pegs are in the wrong spot for sure. So now we go and we measure the backside here. And on our problem spring, we're roughly 27 and a half. And on our probably correct spring, we're closer to 27 and three quarter. Kinda, but not really. So it's almost like, you know, this is, what is this? What did I say? This was longer here and then this one's longer here. So it's like it was, you know, spring might be the right size here and we can measure that too. It's just a little difficult the way I'm doing it. But uh, here, what we can do, I don't know what we can do here. It's kind of hard to measure the spring, you know what I mean? Just because of the way that it is. But what we're seeing is the pegs in a different spot, which will throw off your axle alignment naturally. Um, yeah, you can't can't be having that. So you got these OEM ones that should be to spec, I would say. They're gonna be to spec, I'll tell you that much. They're, they're original the van, nobody noticed anything wrong there, so. Nice. So, anyway, I mean, that one's probably a good spare. What I should do is measure these and see what the difference is. Um, you know, just for the heck of it here, measure one of them. So let's, let's take this one right here. Get all the stuff off of it. Flip it over here and try not to scuff it up too bad. I just painted these. I mean, I mean, I just bought these. They're brand new. I'm um, sorry. Oh, you, you know what you notice here? This the peg isn't even. It's like welded in as part of the manufacturer. And these are pressing, so we gotta. We see, we can see the divot though. We can we can measure with that. But so keep note that this is backwards from the orientation of the other one. So. Gotta make sure, remember, we're measuring for the back measurement first here. And let's get this up like that. Okay. So, I hate doing this one handed. We're looking to the back measurement, looks about 27 and 3 quarter. So, okay, rear to mid measurement, 27 and 3 quarter. And front to mid measurement is 28 and a quarter, maybe a little under, honestly. Nope, 28 and a quarter, just about, maybe just a hair under. So 28 and a hair, and 27 three quarter. So we're looking for 28 and a hair, which is pretty much what we got here. Hair under uh, 28 and a quarter. And now we're looking for 27 and three quarter right here which is about what we got so this spring is right this spring is wrong like we suspected or could tell I guess this spring oh because I knocked them out they don't stand very well on their own so we're looking for 27 and 3 quarter here and what we've got is closer to 27 and a half so too short and now, what, 28 and a quarter? And we've got 28 and a half too long. This is a hole in the wrong spot. Spring's the right size, so that part was done right, but whoever drilled and smashed this guy in incorrectly, as you can see, see how this one's not mauled over or hit over at all? That was pressed in. Somebody did something wrong here when they were doing this, whoever made this spring in Columbia, I believe. Manufactured in Columbia. Husky spring. So, PO, or what is that? That's not a PO. Um, order. Numbers are all the same. Yeah, everything's the same. It's just literally 
the hole is in the wrong spot. Mint. But you can tell the manufacturer did something wrong there. See how regular that one looks and how irregular that one looks? Like, I didn't take this paint off. That was already gone. Somebody hit it, hit this over, peened it over. So, that's just cool. So we got one good spare spring, I guess, for the next time I have a collapsed spring or something. But, you know.
back on the ground. Everything's tight as far as I recall. Uh, and it's time for go for a test drive. So the big tell here is going to be if the steering wheel is straight when we go down the road because it was straight before. And when we put those new springs on, it wasn't straight because the axle wasn't lined up right. Just floor mat, pull it over. So first test, does it start? 168, 163, 1,000 miles. All right, we're running. Oh, it's warm in here. I think the AC works. Well, I can't clean the windshield because the wipers don't work. That's another problem. Um, I do think the AC is working good. Okay. All right, please be straight. Um, I really don't want to have to deal with this again. So we should build it back up just a little bit here. Kind of blocked in here. I think we can get out. There we go. Plant lives again. Got the tree on the roof. Tree branch. So this way. Forgot my shades, naturally. Um, well, I think the wheel's straight here, guys. So I think we were back to square, uh, you know, sort of where we were at before, which is good. Okay, yeah, the wheel seems straight. Transmission I put in still works. So that's good. The engine still runs. Full tank of gas nearly. That's cool. I think the AC is working. Seems like it's cooler than uh, what it was. Granted, it's only 70 degrees outside. It's just hot in here. I think we're good. So, good news guys, uh, we uh, fixed it. Yay, we got the right springs, yay. I think that's gonna do it for eggplant here, at least for a bit. I'm going to drive it, I think, now. And at, at this point, I'm gonna drive this and gray van. I gotta get green bean up in the air this afternoon yet, and it's got a wheel bearing that's going out. So I wanna figure out which bearing that is and go in probably make parts where I get the bearing probably drive eggplant why not you know so and that and I really I only drove it for like two days before I was like oh let's do the rear springs and stuff ha 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 and then it sat for two months as I figured that mess out oh yeah this AC's kicked on or it's working good but uh I haven't you know it was what 167 the middle of 167,000 miles we don't even you know a couple hundred miles we've put on this thing since you know, I got it back in November. Obviously, we had to put a transmission in it, but I'd like to run it through the hoops here, see what else kind of comes up. But I think that's going to do it for, you know, the uh, rebuild and uh, will it run and drive of eggplant here. Everything now is just drive it and do maintenance on it, you know what I mean? So, also, um, you know, the other thing, I, these tires didn't shake, and then I went and I got them balanced at discount tire, and they seem to shake afterwards. So I might have to have these tires rebalanced because I, you know, I, you can't, I don't know, man. I just seem to have poor luck with getting my tires balanced. All right. So we're coming on to the uh, tar road here. Let's see, let's see how she does. Let's turn that fan off so we can kind of hear what's going on here. Weird brake poppy noise, I remember that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, wheel straight. There's some sort of springy poppy noise going on. on the front end, I don't know what. Yeah, wheel straight, guys, so. So we're not shaking yet. Ah, there it is. Seventy. It's not 
not so bad of a shake, but it's like, it's there. Better than I remember it being when we uh, test drove it with the uh, misaligned axle. That's not that bad, honestly. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. So I'll, I'll get it aligned and I'll get a balance done on it. So that'll be cool. Oh yeah, we're cruising. So I wanted to start messing around with this wiper problem again. All roads lead to the body control module being bad, but I wanted to test some things first. So we got our Chilton manual here and we're in what, 12.6 and 12.7. And right here, this is the wiper switch here. And what you want to test for is to test if your switch is good. And this is what it tells you to do. So you got pins six and seven on the switch here. So if we look here like this, see how that matches up? So what you do is you take your multimeter, which is there, set it to ohms, and you want to jump these two pins here. And depending on where this switch is set, whether it's set at zero, your first delay, or high or low, you know what I mean, you want to check your ohms readings. So this is the switch we had in it that for some reason we thought was good just by putting in, I think we just put it in one of the other vans and tested it. Well, uh, this the ohms readings on this switch are way out of whack. Like it doesn't make sense at all, meaning that it uh, didn't really work. I think the high and low worked, but all of the delays were not working. So this switch is really, this is no good. So we went back to this old switch that I had here and this tested perfect. This switch itself tests moi. So I don't, you know, so we still got a problem obviously. But um, this works, and we can set it to low. So, so there's high, and there's low. So that all works, but it's like it's not. So we can, all this works here, right? You know, but, but like, and you can tell it changes speed when it gets to high and low. But the wipers themselves never turn on. So it's never getting an on signal when I do that. So it's like we're not getting voltage to the right spot, I don't know. So we're gonna look into it a little more, figure out where the power is coming in. I, uh, electrical crap, and I'm not very good at this electrical stuff, so I'm kind of figuring my way out through it. This is, got my multimeter here. This is what I've got. It's an AM520, so it's a decent multimeter, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, that switch tests bad based on those values right there. And then also, it, like you can test like if let's say your high beams or lights and stuff or blinkers don't work, you can test here by unplugging the. Uh, all you want to do is unplug this, and you can jumper those pins right here together. Like you just jumper pins four and eight on the connector to get your left blinker to turn on and this and that to make sure you know the function works. And then obviously you can test the switch by turning it and then doing it. Well, we just uh, drive an eggplant here. Well, we're in a construction zone and uh, she just up and died on me. Started missing really bad and then it quit. Uh, it says I got a quarter tank of gas, but I got a feeling I don't. Hit this uh, valve here. Yeah, there's no gas. I think we're out of gas. I think the gas gauge is wrong. So that's, that's freaking cool. Uh, Dad's right behind me here, so he's pulling up now. <laughs> so that's convenient. Now can you just ship up? Uh, it was our hard drive that we replaced. Uh, rip, rip eggplant. again um yeah i put like half of that five gallon can we had to go to nearest hardware store grab a five gallon can fill up that 
and we're running again. That's that fuel gauge is wrong. It clocks out at just under half a quarter. I'll have to figure that out later, but we're running. Well, it seems like it's reading fine now. I don't, I don't know, man. That's fuel lights on now. Whatever happened. All right, guys, so I'm driving eggplant home from work here. As you can see, we've got 168,932 miles. So we've got just over 1,000 miles on this transmission now and engine and the entire vehicle since we uh, got it running for the first time in five years. But uh, I'd like to show you that uh, the intermittent wipers are working right now. So I noticed now that I've been driving it, once it's uh, warmed up and that BCM down there has gotten warm enough that the contacts have expanded, uh, they're making good connection at the intermittent wipers and everything works at all you know like it so if i set at different speeds it works fine so that's just something to do with otherwise i can trigger it manually just fine the washer one is on a different uh on a different connection to the bcm i guess a different uh cable or uh you know you know what i mean anyway that always works so i, I can i can you know regulate them manually if i have to but otherwise yeah they're working so that's good news, I guess. That's pretty much the last big kink in this uh, van. Oh, hey guys. We're in eggplant, the 97. And we're looking at this cluster right here that works well. Um, as far as I'm aware, this one has not quit on me yet. And what we've got going on is that cluster down there that we got at U Pull out of that very low mile caravan that has really 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 nice gauges on it like this thing is not sat in the sun and cooked all the orange out of them 72,000 miles I think but we want to put that cluster in here so we can take this cluster and put it in green bean so I can unfortunately send green bean to the next owner with a cluster that doesn't quit <laughs> I swear I put three clusters in that van and they keep quitting on me. Um, so, you know. The one that I've got it in now actually doesn't let it run when it's out. Whatever is shorted out there ceases the computer's ability to talk properly. But it, uh, I'm assuming that the van I got that out of is that's why it was parked. Anyway, long story short, this is a. 96, 97, early 98 cluster. This is a 99, 2000 cluster with a different style plug on it. And I believe that the pinout is actually the same. The plastic plug is different. So what we're gonna try to do is try cut this to have it so it fits a older style plug. And I think I got a pigtail downstairs with the other bad clusters that need to be resoldered. And I will try to get that to fit here. And then once I verify that, we'll take the dash back off here again. Yeah. And we'll swap the cluster out, see if that one works like it should. I don't see why that one would. That's a pretty little amount of cluster. And then we will take this one and put it in the other van. So that'll be cool. But I think that other part will be in the video for Green Bean, not this. So I guess I gotta be careful what I say because this hasn't come out yet. Um, I've been working on this van for six months and you guys haven't seen any of it. It is uh, June 10th now, I think, or June 11th. So soon, we're getting to the point where I'll start unveiling this van. And by now you guys have already seen it, obviously. This is like, what, like part 20 or something? I have no idea that I've got so much footage for this thing. But anyway, I'll let you know what I figure out here. So, I'll bring you back then. All right, so I got a practice board here. This isn't the nice board. I do have it so it works. This is what I ended up notching out. I don't know if this part was required, but it definitely helped. And just notch this whole front out. And it does wiggle in there, and it plugs in. And it's tight. I don't think that would come out, you know. But what we've realized is this test board that I, I marked it, I had it marked as untested, would have not worked. And I will show you why. This is what happens on all of these boards. If you look here, getting that in there, we can see three solder joints on the end there are broke. That is why these boards quit right here. So what I'm actually going to do is I pulled out my solder gun. I'm going to try solder this board back up. And then we're going to test and make sure that this works with the older stuff. Like, I know it will. The boards are the same. But, uh... 
Yeah, we're going to try to solder those up real quick. So you see how they look now. Let's see how my poor solder job fixes them. But uh, we got to push these pins. So those pins, the solder joints are so broke, the pins are pushed out. If you look here, now they're flush. Yeah, so we're going to solder those back in and we'll see. And I pressed on the other ones. I couldn't get them to move right here because I just pulled this out and just press on the pins so you can see which ones are bad. So you can press them through. So that's nice. So we're going to resolder those up quick or try. And I will bring you back. Oh, what do you think about that? That looks pretty good. Definitely better than it was. How about that? So that, that might work. So we're going to put this board back together. And we will give that a shot in eggplant here as our test rig. We'll just see if this board works. And then we will cut up the good board. Maybe. Well, I'm still going to do that because I want to have that nice one in here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the board out of green bean and I'll solder that up separately. And I'll just keep using that one. Then it's not all hacked together. So, anyway, so resolder. But yeah, if you've got cluster quits working or bonks out and you have to hit the dash this is this is why right here these these joints quit they uh, get old and brittle and they crack actually I'm looking at this one right here this joint on the far end on the bottom sure looks cracked to me really it could probably use with all of them being resoldered but this is just a test proof of concept here that the older plug will fit and work here if you hack it out like that all right let's see if this works yeah, it does. Heck yeah, that works. Works just fine. So we've got the mileage is correct, uh, the park meter and everything works. Fuel gauge is reading correctly. The only thing I remember about this is when I was messing around with swapping all my clusters on, this is the Highline cover. So down here, it's not gonna show a cruise button. So when I turn cruise on, I believe it's gonna show service engine zoom light, see that? Because they had the service engine light down here and the cruise was a light. It was off that uh, Maroon 96, which had the Highline interior. See that? Isn't that cool? Nope, that's just the cruise. As you can see, the cluster is physically the same. They changed the facade or cover, I guess they call it. So let's see. Yep, that all seems to work. Everything seems to work. Um, I guess blinkers aren't on here. I don't know what else, how to turn on. Uh, Dora jar light is on, so that all seems to work. But yeah, it works. Works just fine. It's just a matter of the plastic being different for whatever reason, you know, because why not, right? So, that is a uh, mission successful. That proof of concept is good. And now I know this cluster works too, and especially after resoldering it. So, we're going to put that nice low mileage cluster in this fan and we're gonna have some really pretty gauges and needles. See, look at these needles, they're completely bleached. We're gonna have some nice bright orange ones. So here's my new board, this is that low mile board. And I got it cut out, this is how I notched it right there. That seems to work fine. It doesn't have a clip, but it's a snug fit. I'm not worried about it. Then what I did is I got my uh, multimeter out and I continuity tested all of the bulbs. They all they all ohm out just fine. And uh, when we test fit the plug, we noticed that one of the pins dropped down. If we look here, we've got one bad solder joint. And it's out of that same three that were bad on that other board. And I think, I think on the one board I soldered a long time ago, it was those same pins too. So, but it's just one. So we're just gonna, actually, if you look at that guy right there on that end, he looks, he looks pretty broke too, doesn't he? So we're going to solder that one on the far left end and that one on the right. And the rest look okay. Maybe that top right one too. I'll get you guys in there. You guys can see better. So I'll set the board down. You tell me. That one for sure. That one I think I'm going to do. Those all look okay. That one I'm going to do. Those look okay. So we're going to do the two right end ones, and then we're going to do that left bottom one. The rest look okay. So we're going to solder that up, get this board put together, and this should be the new good board for eggplant. We'll make sure this all works. It should. All right, got the shiny new cluster and got it all cleaned up here, plugged in. First test here to if this cluster works. I did have to do 
one solder joint repair. Oh, and it works. That is the nicest cluster I've ever had in one of my caravans. Ooh, that is a nice cluster. Seems to work, fuel gauge is on, door jar lights on. I saw the cruise button is actually cruise. So it's got the right non-highline front facade, front cover. Mileage shows right, hit the trip, trip shows right, the button works. I'm not testing the reset button, I don't do that. All those lights are lit up. We did test all the, the lights to be good, even though I don't have these hooked up to test. So that's cool. I'll get this all screwed in, get this put back together, and that'll be that. And eggplant here will have a nice, shiny 99 to 2000 style cluster in a 97 Dodge Caravan.